I would stop in the kitchen and I'd say hello before I went to my room. And then she had to teach me how to actually have a conversation. I was supposed to ask her, how are you? How's your day? Yeah. And I, I found it very annoying. But you meant to make a conversation. Eventually, yeah. I think of Alma every time I put a blanket blanket in a blanket cover. The inside, inside way up. Did anybody else learn from Alma how to put a blanket in a blanket cover? I learned from you. Which you turn it inside out. Anyway, that's how you do it. You match up the corners and then you flip it inside way out. Often when I sit down to dinner, I think of how present Alma and Oka were at their kitchen table. And I want to imitate that. It was just like a very timeless experience of having dinner with them during the week. I remember Oma talking about how Opa could have married anyone, but she couldn't. And Opa is so nice to her. So, so nice to her. He's so, so nice. <laughs> When I listen to the records, I think of the hours I spent on the recliner listening to the records. I remember her raspberry celestial seasoning tea that she made for Shalashidas. I remember that during Shalashidas, Opa would sing this Ms. Marladada tune that she didn't like, and she would say, Marisha, <laughs> sing something with a little more um. <laughs> yes, the Shira Miles. Yeah. yeah. I remember her singing Lecha Dodi on Friday night. Lecha Dodi, I remember her recommending that I bring a book to school in case I got bored. Did you really say it? Always. I dare you to smell? Yeah. Hope I've always had a safe Yeah. Or a book. How are we doing in our family? There's a sitter. There's a book on you. No, her dad told me to take the... Uh, the cover? Take, yeah, <laughs> you take the cover off the safer and you put it on the book right. so nobody can tell. I remember the creaking in 401 as we oh, walked down the hall. Okay. I remember her saying, clean up the toys before Opa gets home because Opa does not like a mess. <laughs> Oma made being a housewife and a mother into an art. She really took satisfaction in her work. Oma is really present for me, and I think for us and our family and for our kids, because we talk about her a lot. Um, there's one story that she told me, she used to tell me that for some reason sticks in my head. And I, the story is um, the story is about a man who's trying to train his donkey. You know this story? There's a man who's trying to train his donkey to survive on less food. So he made up a plan that every week he's going to reduce the donkey's food by a little bit, and a little bit, and a little bit, and then. Um, and then the punchline is, um, and just when she had the donkey nearly trained to survive without food, the donkey died. <laughs> and I like that story because um, I think it stuck in my mind because it reminded me of um, I feel like Alma really believed in people having needs and not um, 
She just she just believed in people being normal and people having needs. And um, I, I, for some reason, that story echoed in my head. Um, in other words, you mind. can push and push and push, but you can only push so far. Exactly. <laughs> you can't. Tr yeah, you cannot train a donkey to survive without food. <laughs> <laughs> and you also wow, can't train a person or yourself to survive without certain things. You need that. Um, so that's what I learned from Oma. And I think you just said a high bar. I speak in first. I don't know. I was going to speak. <laughs>